Good morning, everybody. It is June the 4th, 2021. It is 6 o'clock in the morning here on the west coast of North America. And I'm with a really interesting guy. His name is Lucas Canada. He is in a town called Sarlat, which is in the south of France. And uh, Lucas is a global team leader at an incubator company called Unicorn. And he's also a professional rugby player for Sarlat rugby team. So Lucas grew up as a diehard rugby fan. And he was in South America, actually, where he grew up. He started playing rugby at the age of five. And uh, later in life, he suffered what many thought would be a career-ending knee injury. But he moved to France, and he built a career as a professional rugby player in France. And uh, after a few years there, he joined the Sarlat rugby team, and he met a guy named Dom Einhorn, who is the founder and CEO of the Unicorn Incubator Accelerator. Now, this person, uh, Dom Einhorn, became a great mentor for Lucas. And uh, what he learned was that when it comes to sports teams, branding and marketing, just like any business, is super important. So they build apps and branding strategies for sports teams. Lucas is a student of engineering, management, economics, and he's self-taught in nutrition and fitness. And as I mentioned, he's a professional rugby player. So it's interesting how all these skills kind of tied together to make him a marketing expert in particular for sports teams. So let's welcome Lucas to the show right after this. <laughs> Welcome to the New Town Big Dreams Podcast, an interview style talk show that's your gateway to the fabulous and fascinating people who relocated to start a new life. Whether you're new to our podcast or your city, our fellow neighbors from across Canada, North America, and the entire English speaking world share their stories of reaching new horizons and big dreams. So sit back and relax as we navigate in depth and intimate conversations with entrepreneurs, thought leaders, executives, creatives, and anyone who can share their story about their new town, Big Dreams. And now, here's your host, Luke J. Menkes. So, Lucas, thank you so much for coming on the show. We had some technical difficulties a couple of weeks ago, but it's working good now. Thank you. It's good to see you. Thank you, Luke, for the invite. I mean, the pleasure is all mine. So you've lived in many countries. You grew up in Argentina, if I understood correctly. And right now you're living in the south of France in a place called Sarla. Tell yes. us the story of how you got from Argentina to Sarla. It's kind of a good story. Um, I was born and grew uh, in Argentina uh, with my parents, uh, where I spent uh, almost 25 years. Um, but I had one dream uh, that was to become a professional rugby player. Back in 2015, uh, there were no professional teams in Argentina. So that's why uh, I knew that uh, the possibilities of going away somewhere else to live were very high if I wanted to fulfill my dream. And finally, uh, I received uh, my agent's call. Uh, on one day, like 6 a.m. in the morning, was sleeping and the phone rang and was all asleep and say, hey, okay, I've, I've got a club that wants you. This is pretty quick. Um, you in or out? I, mean, I don't even know what you're talking about, but I'm in. Uh, I, I, was, I didn't hesitate too much because I knew that that was what I wanted. So that made the decision a bit easier, uh, even though it's not always you know easy to just get away of all your family your friends your habits uh mm -hmm. so but yeah i had that fixed in my mind i knew uh i wanted to try at least what happened and here you find me six years after uh still at the new town because i've moved a couple times uh professional rugby life i would say 
usually goes that way. So you play a couple of years in each club. Uh, very few people stay at the same club for all their careers. So I played uh, three clubs before getting here uh, to Salah, uh, and I've been here for the past year and expect to be here for the for the next uh, time as, as as much as I can, at least. Right. You told me a little bit about why you wanted to move from Argentina because you did play uh, rugby in Argentina, right? But it's much bigger in France. Is that the case? It's not just a matter of size, I would say. The mm -hmm. thing is, in Argentina, you what I was doing, I was waking up very early in the morning. I was going to university. I uh, came back, I uh, worked, I had a business of my own, I had a catering. So I was doing events during the weekend mainly, working during the week to get that done. Uh, and then I had to train in the middle of that. So usually finding, finding out some time to get fit, to get ready to, to play. Uh, back home, every single club trains like from 9 p.m. in the night till 11, 11.30. You come back home, you're wrecked, you're tired, and then next morning up again at six. Uh, so it's it's something that I, I appreciate very much to have lived with that because I think there's lots of things that you learn. Uh, but I really wanted to at least try myself, um, you know, the challenge at least of of being dedicated to rugby. And rugby only at first that was the main reason why i came to france and during the past years i've also realized that uh there's much more than just rugby uh i found the connection between rugby and business or between sports and business in general being uh, much much stronger than whatever what everyone feels or thinks it is and mm -hmm. uh, that's how i also became uh one of the team leaders here at Unicorn Incubator. So um, I am managing kind of both things at the same time, being a professional rugby player, but also the business side uh, of work. Okay. So I want to ask you all about uh, Unicorn, but um, first tell us a little bit about Sarla. Where is it near? Is it near a big city we might have heard of in France? And what made you decide to go to that little town of all the places you could go to in France or the rest of Europe? Well, to be honest, at first I was not convinced because uh, Sarla, it's a very small town. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know it before I came. Uh, I've never heard of it, even though it's very popular, I would say. So it's a very mm -hmm. small town between nine and 10,000 people live here during the year. But it's the seventh most visited uh, place in France with between two and three million tourists a year. Um, the place is two hours away from Bordeaux and Toulouse in the southwest of France. Um, and what really um, made up my mind was that I was with my wife and uh, when we got called to play in here to come be a part of this big, big challenge and project that we are building, um, I decided to come physically to, to, to meet the people that were running the show. And that's how I met Dom Einhorn, our founder and president. And he's the one that convinced me that the, this whole thing is much more than just rugby club. It's, we are building a brand, we're building a story. We're building an adventure, how I'd like it to call. For me, it's really a, a challenge. This is what uh, what keeps driving me to go forward and to keep going. Um, I think that's the most important thing or the reason why uh, I'm really very happy to be here. Right. So right now it's uh, June 4th, 2021. What is the status of the COVID situation there in Sarla? Are most people still wearing a mask? Are restaurants closed? What's the what's the story? 
Well, uh, people still wear masks, uh, and I think we'll keep them for quite a while. Uh, at least a semester of security or extra uh, precaution. Um, however, the situation in here in Salah specifically was not that bad, I would say, during COVID. Mm -hmm. And right now, here in France, as gener in general, uh, it's getting a lot better. For the last two or three weeks, uh, restaurants are half open, so you can go and sit outside and have something to drink, something to eat, which already it's a very big and important step, I would say, uh, right. for them and for all the people. Um, there's, uh, next week, on the 9th, there's more things that are going to open up. Uh, for instance, uh, gym, uh, I think the cinemas are going to open with restricted uh, amount of people. Uh, but yeah, things are slowly uh, going into motion and uh, getting better. Vaccines are, for the past month, I think, uh, they're going a lot quicker. I'm taking mine tomorrow, for instance, my first dose uh, tomorrow. And uh, it's open to anyone above 18 years old right now. Mm -hmm. So you just go to your phone, you get into the app, you you book yourself. It's pretty easy and everyone can get vaccinated right now. It's interesting. going pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Um, so you met a man named Dom Einhorn. And he is the founder and he's the CEO of Unicorn, which is a, a startup incubator. Tell us the story of how you met Dom Einhorn. Well, he's, we are also running the rugby club. So okay. the past uh, 14 months, we've, I would say, acquired a style of rugby as one of our startups. Uh, even though the club is like 118 years old, for us mm -hmm. internally, we call it a startup because it has the same issues and problems that every startup is facing. It's If you know any amateur or semi-professional clubs anywhere in the world, they are probably almost all run by um, volunteers. And yeah. that tends to get a bit complicated in terms of scaling, in terms of performing, because as a volunteer, you might not have the expertise that you actually need to develop a specific task on that area. Uh, you're doing it because there's no one else. You, you do it whenever you have some time. You're usually slammed with your own personal job or problems. You do what you can, right? Uh, so we took in, um, we started to identify the little uh, problems from the beginning. Uh, we tried to, we started to, to fix them up. Usually, uh, that's what we do with any of our clients, right? We we see where the friction is. We we identify it, and then we just find a solution, put it into place, and go to the next level. And that's how we mm -hmm. scale up. And um, so, yeah, that's how. Yeah. That makes sense. So um, tell us a little bit about him. What What's he like to work with? Uh, he's probably one of, one of a kind. I mean, I'm very happy to have met him. Uh, one of the things I always tell to him, he goes super quick in every single sense. It's a challenge to be working with him and to try to follow him. Mm -hmm. um, Pretty amazing dude, very straightforward, super honest. Uh, sometimes that doesn't, uh, I mean, not everyone likes that much honesty somehow. Right. Uh, I rather I rather have, have things said to my face, uh, whatever that is. I rather know what's going on, and uh, that's how we work. That's how we, uh, a little bit about our like uh, spirit as a business, and um, that's why what we do with our clients too. One of the main reasons why we don't take anyone or most of the people that approach us to work with us is because, I mean, if the things don't work out, uh, we just say straight to the face and we try to be uh, time effective uh, for both sides. Um, one of the big questions that we ask ourselves every single time that we intend to work with someone is, 
uh, what's the added value that we uh, as a company are we bringing into yours? If that question is not very clear, that means we're going to waste both our times and we'll just say no. The, not because we are, uh, I don't know, selfish or whatnot, just because this relationship is not going to work for the best for both sides. Uh, this Any relationship, in my opinion, needs to be a win-win situation where we both benefit from working together. Right. Uh, that's why we pick our clients very carefully. We usually, on average, we say nine, nine out of ten times, we say no, thank you, mm -hmm. but no. Um, so, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a bit who he is, a really interesting fellow. Right. So tell uh, the audience, what is an incubator? If um, people haven't heard that term before, I know what it is, but... Maybe explain to the audience what an incubator is. Sure. First, let me, uh, when we uh, identify a startup, we do it the American way. That mm. means we, we don't take a startup with just an idea on your head. We go a bit further. So we ask ourselves three main questions. First, do you have a proof of concept? Okay. Second, do you have at least one or two clients uh, or more, of course? And third, were you able to convince someone that what you are going on is going to be solving someone's problem and not just creating a new one? Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you don't manage to convince someone close to you, how are you going to manage to convince um, an investor that we bring to you uh, ourselves uh, or whoever is going to be working with you or buying your product or you know, so many things. Right. So if you don't fill those three questions, uh, for us, you don't go into the startup world, as we say. Um, you're more into uh, developing your idea. There are lots of people on lots of incubators that also help uh, uh, people develop that, but we are not that those. Um, so we just sometimes direct you to someone that can help you out or just, I'm sorry, but we are not on that step. Maybe contact us afterwards. And what we do is we take what you have and we scale. We help you identify the frictions, getting you ready uh, as a business to grow. Mm -hmm. And we go, I would say, um, pretty much from the pre-seed uh, rounds just into IPO or floating into uh, any, any market. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, one of our last projects was a virtual reality company that we took very early stage. Uh, we've developed with their team uh, helped them out, did a lot of marketing campaigns for them, uh, SEO, mm, content syndication, ASO, uh, so App Store optimization. Um, and then we helped them out reaching out to investors. Uh, we have, we are hosting, for instance, um, the Startup Super Cup on the 1, 2, 3 October. Okay. That's an event that's specifically designed to make uh, startups meet the capital that they need. Mm. Um, so we are we're having between 50 and 100 startups in here in Salah with at least 500 investors that are, we, we know that are real investors. So we vet and we pick the people that are coming to the event very, very much like we do for our clients on Unicorn. We are doing the same for the event. Um, so we actually bring value to both sides. Right. We don't want this just to be an event, but it's a business-minded event, right. right? So um, is it fairly easy to start a business in France, or is there a lot of regulation? Like in North America, we have a perception that business in France and in the European Union, it's uh, a lot of red tape, a lot of regulations, a lot of things that you have to do is that true or is that um, a myth i think that's a bit uh 
out of date, I would mm. say. Uh, it used to be very complicated, even in the, U in the US. Yes. I don't know, 25 years ago, it was very costly to, to, to launch very a startup. Cool. Right now, one of, the, one of the reasons why I think so many startups fail is because there's, uh, it becomes very easy to just create a, a company right now that everyone's doing one. Uh, and this, instead of uh, fixing a problem, they are creating a new one. Uh, we try to explain that to our clients or the people that we meet that if you're doing something, if you are creating a company, if you're going to take the risk, because let's us not forget that having a startup right now is very, very risky. Mm -hmm. the, the statistics show that most fail. Yep. Um, but with the right help, with the right um, investors, with the right company, you could actually reduce that risk significantly to put all the, your chances uh, at your back and actually go, go, go the right way. Um, but the, the main idea that you need to have in mind is that you are creating this company to fix a problem, mm -hmm. to um, give your customers a solution, not just to create a new problem, right? right. That's true. So um, it, it, your bio mentions that you're the team lead for a couple of these startups. One is uh, Formation.gg yes. and the other is C CX Sports. Tell us a little bit about those two companies and yeah. uh, what they do and what your involvement is. Sure. Uh, let me go a bit back. Sure. Uh, for Challenger X, C CH Sports is, is the, the name mm -hmm. that we're using. Um, but let me go back a bit for um, on Salo Rugby. So, so as you can see behind me, uh, I've got a flag about yes. the club. This is the rugby club that we took over uh, 14 mm -hmm. months ago. And that we've managed to identify uh, lots of problems and lots of things that we know how mm -hmm. to fix. Like, for instance, at the beginning, we had a name that nobody could, could, even, could even remember. Not, not even the people that live here in Salah knew what the name or, or the, because it was C-A-S, mm -hmm. five different letters. Nobody mm -hmm. knew what it was. Uh, the, world, the word Sala was not on the name. The word rugby was not on the name. So where are we? We are in Salah. What sport are we playing? We're playing rugby. Those two words, uh, for in our mind, in our in our heads, as the digital marketers, need to be mm -hmm. on the name. Yeah. Uh, it's just like so. We just changed the name. We've we had a logo that was pretty crappy to be honest. Uh, not good enough. We did a rebranding, we changed our logos, uh, we kept our colors, but we gave it a, a, a lot more um, identity. Uh, so we are not just creating a club, but we're creating a brand. The idea is to have people identify themselves with the brand, with Salo Rugby as a brand, as a whole. Uh, that's why, as a marketing perspective, the reason why to create a logo that's catchy, that's got a very big impact. Uh, so we started that small, then we started to scale up a little bit. We went into merchandise, into clothing. Uh, I'm wearing right now our um, hoodie from, uh, from the club in here, but with all our sponsors. So merchandise is also a way to promote the people that support you and to mm -hmm. that work with you, right? So uh, to show and to give them the visibility that they are looking for. Um, back, back before, we had almost no, no equipment or, or equipment that whoever wanted. I mean, anyone could go to, to a shop and, hey, could you do me 50 T-shirts? Yeah, yeah, okay, it will cost this much. They paid and they get it. And so everyone had I different see. clothes. At the end of the day, if you're building a brand, you need to be identified all over. Uh, we've also introduced at least 20 different products, uh, keychains, masks, um, 
water bottles. We've got almost everything. And uh, okay, how do we sell those? We created an online store on our website, uh, something that uh, most amateur clubs don't even think about and or don't know how to do it. Uh, we made one that if you go into it at salarugby.com, um, you wouldn't even recognize if it was a lower club like ours, because we are in fourth or fifth division right now, uh, or if it was a pro club in the first mm. or second division in France. And that's the idea. Um, that's the yeah. idea about it. Right. right? Yep. <laughs> Sorry. So, <clears throat> also, um, what we've identified is that those stuff you need to sell it locally to. And uh, now, they, everyone told us that it was not possible to have our stuff being sold at other mm. people's commerce. So we said, mm, I'm not so sure about that. Let's try. And today we have over 20 uh, shops that are selling solar rugby things, equipment, uh, mm -hmm. water bottles. Uh, I don't know. Anything that we have, they are selling it. And it's going pretty well. And the people are enjoying it that... Everywhere you see, you go, mm -hmm. you can see Sal Rugby. And that's the idea, to create this brand. And then we, we took a step further. Um, we went to social media. Um, there is, we had 1,500 followers on Facebook uh, eight or nine months ago. Today, we are at over 130,000. Uh, we, I, I repeat, but we are a very a small fourth fifth division mm. uh in france uh but in terms of social media we are the sixth club wow. right now today amazing the whole country uh because again we worked our social media out we we did what it takes to get there um and then, then we just kept thinking what else do we need we need new sponsors okay we need better sponsors well let's give them the opportunity to, to get the visibility that they need through Sala Rugby. So we signed 62 different broadcast TV uh, OTTs um, agreements with different companies all around the world. Uh, one of them, for instance, is a company based in US, but with a lot of uh, reach into Latin America, uh, which have between six and seven million users. It's a mobile app, and we've made a deal with them that whenever we have a live game, they will send a notification to all their clients, and we've tested, and in the next 10 to 15 minutes, we will have between 350 and 400K people wow. watching our games live. That, and that's with just one of the agreements that we made. But why? Well, the reason is that we uh, intend to give that visibility to our sponsors. That's something we can sell. That's some, something any club can go out and sell and tell, hey, uh, I'm putting your ad into my game. I'm putting your logo mm -hmm. into my jersey. Uh, 300, 350,000 people are going to watch this uh, mm -hmm. at every single game. In the marketing space, eyeballs uh, yes. are money. So if you manage to drive traffic to the people that you're selling to, that's the best way to show value to what you're doing. And then... Um, Please continue. Yeah. So there's a bit more. Um, Challenger X came to us uh, when we started this because we said, I mean, this is a lot of effort that we're doing, uh, a lot of work that we're putting into. Uh, creating this process of turning the small teams into a big one uh, to make them look uh, like a professional team or even better. Uh, like we'd like to say a Challenger X is mm -hmm. turning Davids into Goliaths. So taking the small and making them big. Uh, and that's how Challenger X was created uh, two weeks ago as a SaaS. So we are providing the solutions that we've mm -hmm. implemented into Salo Rugby to all the teams, all the clubs uh, that are, are out there, no matter where they are or no matter which sport they're playing. This service 
can help them develop, can help them fix their problems and scale. That's right. the, that's the, the idea. That's amazing. So is it mostly sports clubs that you're doing the incubation for, or do you do other types of businesses? We do lots of types, but on at Challenger X, we are targeting uh, any club. You, Our main target is what we call tier two, tier three level. So amateur semi-pro teams, which are kind of uh, hustling with uh, lots of these issues that we've identified and that we've Mm -hmm. proven that we know how to fix. Uh, That's why we uh, are targeting those right now. Um, And also because we are in a position right now um, to add a little cherry on top of that uh, exponential curve of growth uh, to our clients. That is that we are in a position to Mm -hmm. mint a token uh, for any club in 10 to 15 minutes. Um, we've done it already with our club. We have not launched it yet to the market, but we own a Sala token, mm-hmm. so a social token that will allow the teams and the communities to engage together mm. and to grow together. Uh, that will, that's like the end of the line into growth will allow the teams to actually create a lot more added value, uh, engage their communities a lot more, uh, and also keep together, you know, to, to mm-hmm. give the, their fans a real tool and a real possibility to, mm-hmm. to be a part of what they're doing. That makes um, a lot of sense how your expertise with uh, sports and fitness as tied into your technical knowledge and knowledge of startups. Um, do you help companies and teams all across France or across Europe? Where is your market? All around the world, frankly. Uh, we've been, without even doing uh, outreach, we've been contacted by football teams, uh, basketball teams. Uh, I don't know why or how, but there is lots of badminton, badminton. teams actually reaching mm-hmm. out to us without without doing any promotion. That's, that was pretty weird, actually, because we were not expecting that. But we have teams uh, in Latin America that want to be a part of. We have teams here in France and in Europe. We have lots and lots of interest in the US and in the UK uh, from what we've done from our relationships. Uh, and it's growing pretty quick. In fact, um, if you go to challengerx.io, mm-hmm. Um, in the next uh, six weeks, our intentions are to be floating at the Aquis Exchange uh, at, mm. in London. Wow. How do people find out more about your services and your business? Well, the main uh, point of contact, I would say, would be to just add me on LinkedIn, uh, send me a message. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, I'm around pretty much mm-hmm. every time. Um, so that's Lucas Caneda. That's L U C A S C A N E D A. Um, just shoot me a message there. I'm pretty reactive. And then you have our website, uh, challengerx.io. Uh, or if not, straight into Unicorn Incubator. Probably if you just Google Unicorn Incubator right now, it's going to be first or second okay. choice for you. So if not, it's unicornincubator.com. Uh, you can find out more about us. And it's spelled with a yes. Q. We have exactly. to remember. Yeah. Good point. A little, I would say, encouragement to the people that are uh, sports people, but also business side. Those things can and should be done together. I've learned through the past years mm-hmm. that there's a lot more than just play being a professional player. Um, there's a whole business world out there that the quicker you get into, the better. And actually uh, mixing these two passions made me way more effective at both things at the same time, even though I thought that it was kind of impossible mm-hmm. that I had to focus on one or the other. One, I mean, like five years ago, that, that was what I thought. And uh, that my only passion was to play mm-hmm. rugby. But actually, no. I mean, if you are in the right 
part of the business world into whatever you like, uh, it becomes a passion that I, I, I can tell you the past year I've enjoyed myself so much being a part of this challenge. Uh, and I, would, I wouldn't change it. I would, even, even today, if I get uh, just a professional offer, I wouldn't say yes, because I think there's no going back from what I'm living today, what I'm, mm -hmm. I'm living a very nice challenge, a very, it's an adventure, right? And uh, I think that's the beauty about it, that it mixes everything that I like at the same time, uh, motivation, uh, resilience, uh, sports, uh, business, investments, everything at the same time. And, just how you you need to keep going keep going keep getting further uh there's lots of things to do um so i'm thrilled i'm confident that our projects are really really uh helping people out helping other societies um just that encourage people to find that passion because uh another thing that we tell our clients or that we we don't really tell them that that much but when we interview uh, our clients if we don't see that passion coming from them then we probably decide not to work with them because mm -hmm. at the end of the day we've tried it and you end up running it for them not running it with them that's not what we are looking for we are mm -hmm. looking for to help you out support you uh, give you the tools that you need to develop, to grow, to scale, to succeed. But we're not here to run the show for you. Right. Well, that's really great. And uh, what an interesting story of moving to France and uh, connecting with Dom and merging your two passions, technology and business with uh, rugby. And uh, you look great there with the uniform and everything that your company helped design. Thank you. Looks great. And it looks like you've got uh, some beautiful weather there. The sun is just coming up here. Okay. I'm in Western Canada. So I think we're about nine hours time difference. So um, I hope you enjoy your beautiful evening there in the south of France. And it was great talking to you today. Thank you, Luke. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you for inviting me to your show. And uh, let's keep in touch. Glad to be talking to your audience. And speak to you soon. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Newtown Big Dreams podcast with your host, Luke Menkes, and his authentic guests. And we love our listeners and hope you subscribe now to learn more about the amazing journeys of our incredible guests who relocated to find a new town, Big Dreams. And remember, make your dreams big. Thank you.